Hey everybody, I'm TJ Major, spotter of the Six Cup car. Had the 8 Xfinity this weekend. Took, I, I didn't have a truck this weekend. Decided to watch that event. That's, that's fun. Uh, what's up, Freddie Craft spotter was. for Bubba Wallace, Chandler Smith, and the 20 truck. Uh, Brett is... Obviously not here. He's not here. I don't know. I, he's probably flying at this point. I think he's going to show up at some okay, point. Okay, we record at the same time every week, and every week Brett has to chime in saying yeah, he has I'm something. landing at this time. It's like he's – I would almost him just not show up and us worry about him and just, hey, my flight lands at 11. He uh, He's now learning the life of them guys that fly commercial every week. You know, like he doesn't have a – Yeah, but most of them guys fly out Sunday night. Brett wanted another night in Nashville. I, no, I don't think any of them fly out Sunday night. I know Arsene didn't. Uh, especially last night's race being at whatever time wow, that night was. Race, that yeah. was brutal. And then one of the JGR planes Uh-oh. wasn't operating, so what they had to do was load. Back? Yeah, they had oh. to go back. So I'm luckily I was on the first one. I feel really bad for the guys that weren't because they probably didn't take off till about, I don't know, 2.33 o'clock. Yeah, it had to be late. What's up, Casey? Hey, guys. Casey Boat here. We are fresh from NASA. NASCAR. NASCAR. We are fresh we from are Nashville. Fresh from NASCAR. As you can tell, I got tons of sleep last night. You're, you're fresh um, from, where'd you go? Italy or something? Yes, and then went to Nashville. Anything amazing over there or what? Uh, Obviously, the ice cream was good. All right, we're not going to bring Gelato. <laughs> we're not going to bring It was this. gelato. I don't Anyways, <laughs> oh, Ross Chastain gets it done. First win of 2023. I feel like we jinxed him or did something uh, well, for well, him. We, I just, it just proves more people listen to this show because we just woke his ass right back yeah. up. Like we, I mean, damn, we bring it up one time. <laughs> Talked about him on here not doing well after the Gosh. after the couple incidents, and there he goes out and just kicks everybody's ass for the night. Hi, Brad. We're gonna have to we're gonna <laughs> turn it on a Chicago <laughs> street course here. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, uh, what what was your weekend like? I know Freddie might not remember <laughs> half of it because he doesn't even remember we took a picture. I didn't remember. I sent it to you. Yeah, the next day. Yeah, well, I mean, TJ, I how was your weekend? Uh, my weekend was uh, Saturday's race was um very long. Like, what was longer, the cup race or the Xfinity race? It would have to be close. I felt like that Xfinity race was never going to end. And it's all Herm's fault. Do you know it's Herm's fault? No. Why we Herm, Herm looked up the time of race, trying to get oh. an idea of how long the race was going to be. Yeah, because he was trying to get dinner that night. So mm-hmm. he looked it up, and it had been like two hours, the year, two years previous. And he said, you know, about halfway through that race, he said, I looked up the damn times, and I was a jinx. He said, I was hoping we'd get under two hours. He, and I looked, and it was – we were two hours in, and there was still, like, 87 laps to go oh, yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, – I mean, it was an entertaining race. It just uh, – it was annoyingly hot and annoyingly long. Yeah. I mean, and, and listen, that place is hard, man. That, that's one of the toughest places. I was actually talking to Marcus about this up on the – he was – I was sitting down – below the spotter stand and he came out of the press what looks box. harder to drive yeah and it, it like it looks like a mile and a half when you know like if you're out there oh, yeah. or you know you're, you're it almost has like a mile kansas and a half kind of looks like kansas it. a little yeah. bit yeah but it's not obviously it's Super only a, you know it's a, it's shorter yeah. so the corners are a lot sharper it's very easy to miss your line and you saw that as now uh, as the weekend progressed the truck race wasn't terrible but that xfinity race it felt like we couldn't get going i think it took what three or four attempts just to get a damn lap in? Well, yeah, because they were all. <laughs> just, just why? Why is the the series before you get into a cup car harder to drive than the cup car? Yeah, I don't know. Shouldn't what, it be the other way around? Yeah, like that's our point. I was going to make was, you know, the, the, these guys are making mistakes. It wasn't anybody like running out of time. Ta- I mean, I guess you could say running. No, out they of don't. Talent, they don't they, normally the cars, have to. Yeah, the hard, cars are hard to drive. You saw why they're Xfinity drivers in that race. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, you saw that, and but I like. Did we even have any natural spin outs? I mean, other than qualifying when they're going for it? I mean, yeah. in the, did the race have any wrecks that were natural? Not really. Not that I can remember. Uh, then how do we have like 84 of them on Saturday <laughs> and none on Sunday? Well, that's just what we've been talking about with this car. It's, it's, the, you're, you're more on edge with the, <clears throat> with the Xfinity car. At this and point. They, you know, when those guys were going into one, they were on each other's door in the Xfinity race, it was going to get interesting. Oh, yeah. And they can drive up to each other a lot easier. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just a, it was exciting. I enjoyed the Xfinity race, my, even if with all the cautions, it was um, you didn't know what was going to happen. It was a good race for the lead. Yeah, I yeah. mean, Until yesterday's <laughs> race was a good race for the lead. That's what I was about to say. All there were not many natural cautions, or if any, I think the race for the lead and the race for positions. It was. Yeah. It seemed a lot easier than move around. The track's wide though. It's wide now, so you can do that there. And 
like Freddie said, with the corners being they're they're slow in the middle of the corner, like compared to what we're used to, yeah. like a like a Kansas or something like that. They're pretty slow in the middle of the corner, and it was um y- if you were faster than a guy, you weren't pinned behind him. You could actually move, and if you're if you were good, you could still make the pass and get it to work. And yeah, it know. was still it was still hard to pass. You know, it's still it's always going to be hard to this pass. Car, you know, with this car, it's just that's just what that it is. You know, and you could it was easier to pass than Martinsville. <laughs> you could yeah, you could see guys really be able to use the arrow block a lot you know you could see times where a guy would take like a big arc into the corner and just come Mm -hmm. down across your nose and as soon as he got in front of you your nose you know that car would start to take off up the hill um but you know it was it was a good it was a wasn't a terrible race by any means it kind of gets strung out and then it's a you know but listen we can't have unbelievable races every week (laughs) you know it was better i don't think it was a bad race no it's better than i would like i know some of the guys were like oh i'm just too loose saying well you can't in the cup cars it's hard to see yeah. Like they're on the edge and you can't see an Xfinity car. I mean, they you can tell, like for sure. And then uh, Hosovar, Hosovar wins. That's the first time. Uh, no, I guess what's his second win? Uh, yeah, he, second. Uh, remember when he destroyed a bunch of them in Texas? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's coming on here. I don't know when. Him and Brett have been working on that. It's been a great day for uh, Brett's not here. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he'll he'll be here sometime this month or next month, I guess. Um, but yeah, he did a phenomenal job. He yeah, was, he was really race. good. Um, I, I got to think, you know, we've seen Barry, Barry get announced to go to the four car next year. I, I, I'd be I got to think he's a leading candidate to get in the eight. I mean, you see he's running very he was running good uh, on Saturday. And I think he was in the top five and got caught up in that wreck with A.J. and, and Ty yeah. Gibbs and them. <clears throat> so I don't know. You know, he's he did a phenomenal job. And I like I said, I think that's that's a no brainer replacement. I don't know how much money's got to come into it. But he uh He's not afraid to go drive like we were talking. I know he sounds like he tore up a lot of stuff in the dirt late mile race, but I mean, how many other guys went and tried it? Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, mean, he goes there. He he was at Berlin for the um, the money at the bank or whatever that race yeah. was. They just had a couple weeks ago. To his credit, I saw. It in, I was watching that race, and and he was having an issue with I think a left rear tire. And um, you know, we've bashed him on here endlessly for spinning out and, and bringing out cautions and. He came in and the tire was low, but they have a rule in that series like it's got to be flat on the yeah. rim, and it wasn't. So he just kept pumping it up to whatever twenty to thirty pounds in there, just trying to hope you know get to the break where he could change his tires. I don't know. Years past, he might so not it was have done a that. Slow leak. Yeah, it was just a slow leak, but it was it was obviously going yeah. down. Well, eventually, the, he just that's the cards you're dealt that race. Yeah, you and, know? but I'm saying, but it it it's good to see that he didn't just go ahead and spin out and, and ruin the race for everybody else and, and yeah. draw a caution that he needed. He actually uh, so, just came down pit road. I mean. To me, I don't know. I don't. I didn't see it anywhere else. Uh, I mean, there was just a couple times where there was just solo spins that slide down their ass and keep going, and and then we get a caution for it, which is not really. I mean, a little unnecessary. In yeah, my the opinion. one I think was it the forty-eight off of four. Somebody off of four got like didn't yeah. spin. They just got sideways. Yeah, and, they're and sliding, kind of slid sideways, and then I guess you're worried about it. I'm guess you're worried about them hooking or coming back up or something under the track, which would be bad if they did. And, it, and it's we don't know, you know. So like it, it's quick, you know. So we had uh, Tiffany was calling the races this weekend until Sunday, then it was Tucson. But you know, you look if you're looking at so we know as spotters, you know, we're we're kind of scanning the field at times. And if you look up and there's a car completely sideways, that, then that's the first time you see it. Yeah. You're going to be pretty quick. It, to the but I mean, I, I literally said I got one spinner out of four. No, ca- he's already straight. Cautions out. Yeah, yeah. Like it was that quick. It's though. almost like it's it's almost like they get called in. Like they're not. They don't see it. The corner I'm guy calls with, it in. I'm fine with it being caution. But then, <clears throat> you know, you go back to last year's Cup race, and then we get, you know, snow plowed by the 99. Um, and a car is not even driving straight. We're trying to get to the bottom, and there's no nothing. Like yeah. our car is broke. These other guys just slid through the grass. Like, what does what merits a caution and what doesn't? Yeah. But it's, you know, it, when you're looking at it though, I definitely wouldn't want a guy to who somebody was sliding sideways, maybe in the truck race. Yes, and he he had to wheel all the way cut to the right. Well, that's when it cut back. I think he clipped Kyle. I don't remember. Yeah, was it Lawless? Uh, very possible <laughs> i think it was <clears throat> because he was sliding sideways and the role like the general role is you try to spin down to the grass. oh yeah he clipped uh i don't because he, he shot Kyle, head on uh, up, back up the track the 51 you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, who was in the 51 i think uh, jack wood I think. Oh, okay so yeah i didn't but but yeah uh, i know what you're saying yeah. like whenever you're spinning out you you got a lot more room down there and you got to go <laughs> a lot further to hit a wall on the inside than you do he overcorrected and shot head on the wall yeah. so 
I guess we'll, we, you want to hit the spot on, spot off before I go? Hey guys, you like easy money? Then you'll love our new partner, Money Lion, the all-in-one mobile finance app designed to help you take control of your money. With Money Lion, you can borrow, save, invest, and earn money all in one place. That's right. Spot on, spot off is now presented by Money Lion, the official digital finance partner of 2311 Racing. That's promo code dollar sign dirty mo and earn up to $55. All right, first topic, Tony Stewart responding to Jordan Bianchi's question about not hiring a paid driver for the four car said, I'm not interested in some kid's father coming in and buying their way into the Cup Series. I have zero interest in that. TJ, spot on, spot off. I'm um, spot on for, you know, he has his ways, and that's what he likes. I mean, he's always been an old school racer, and he that's how he worked his way up going through the ranks, and he likes to see other people do the same thing. So, um, you know, and obviously there's some pe- there are drivers with money, but – we, we at this point we need those too so I think he's got a pretty good mix of things but Tony's a racer and he's gonna like guys like Priest he they go and win and all sorts of stuff and um then he Josh is coming up the same way winning in Legends cars I get late models um Xfinity cars so it's not I think that's a we all probably would have you know knew Tony would say something like that yeah, I mean, we we go back to you know trying to get back to talent over money. We you know, and it and it's hard because you look at a team like Stuart Haas, and it's clear that they are struggling right now. Like they're not Kevin. What Kevin's doing in their cars right now is phenomenal compared to what everybody else. Because I thought at one point he was the best car yesterday. He drove up in the top five. He yeah, he, he was, was pat mm-hmm. like right when the sun went down. But this is like being Kevin all year. They have <clears throat> they don't have the raw straight one lap speed they don't have that but when the race starts kevin's super obviously he knows what he's doing and he's really good he's really he knows how to discipline himself and stay on the bottom and that's all he did most time was stay right on the bottom yeah and wait for the runs and 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 like he he is consistently a top (laughs) seven five ten car you know he's always in there he's always in the mix but then you look back and you've got eric's running 15th ish usually priest is you know around 20th Briscoe has been, I don't know, like, I can't believe how bad they've been the last month and a half, Couple two months, months now. now. Yeah. Like, it, they're they're getting passed by cars that they shouldn't even be on the same straightaway as. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. It's hard to say. Obviously, great for Josh. Um, great that Tony <clears> takes <throat> this approach. But it, what is the issue over there? Is the issue funding? Because you're getting ready to lose one of your big sponsors in Anheuser-Busch. They're, they're going somewhere else. Um, you know, you lo- now you're losing your, your – we always say you got to have an A guy on your team to know where your equipment's at. Well, now you, you're He's a, definitely the – Yeah, I mean, the there's, there's no question there. <clears throat> there's no. So now you're going into next year with, you know, you're going to have Briscoe, Priest, uh, Josh, and it sounds more likely than not that Eric's out. So then who's going to go in that? Is it another rookie? Is it a guy like that McDowell? Was, that was going to be my question is if he's taking talent over money, who's who is that? next spot who's going to replace well you know you hear you know obviously if 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 you're just going off talent it seems likely to me that it's it's maybe zane smith or or michael mcdowell Mm -hmm. like there michael mcdowell's outperforming his equipment right now he has probably for the last year and a half two years they've been decent yeah they've Um, been decent here the last little you know couple months um but then if at the same time it at some point, you need money. Somebody's got to have a sponsor. You know, like mm-hmm. you can't. Uh, I mean, Gene is probably one of the few guys that can't afford to just fit the whole bill for everybody. But I don't think he wants to do that. Um, so now, you know, you look at you got a guy there that's got plenty of money in Riley Herbst. Uh, is that an option? I, you know, I think if Tony, we'll see where we go here. If, if if Eric leaves, and and Tony, they stick Riley Herbst in there. You're kind of, you know going back on what you say right here, but I, I think it I think he'll he'll stick to it and, and go with a guy like a Zane or a McDowell if if uh, Eric leaves. But it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, it's just great for uh, Josh, I think. And and the thing is like you go out there and, and you get one of the best free agents available. You know, like this is if Josh is easily in the top two or three guys that are not already in the Cup series that are available to run so, you know, you went out and got him, just like we talked about Danny going out and getting his guy last year when he got Reddick. This was kind of the guy they circled, and 
and it's a great fit for that team. It's a great fit for Rodney, his guys. Obviously, they both have a similar background coming up through the late model stocks, and, and I think that, you know, and I think it's unfair to expect. We talk about Harvick being the A guy and outperforming everybody. It's it's not fair to expect Josh to step in there and run as good as mm-hmm. Kevin. So, you know, no. I'm not saying he can't do it, but, you know, I, 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 I don't see him jumping in and running top five, top ten every single week it's next tough. year yeah i mean it's hard you'll see you know he's he's get, i mean he's got a taste of it already this year with the you know yeah. running the nine mm-hmm. and the 48 so but good for him and great for him and, and hopefully this is the trend Ho- you know this is how we get back to the best cup racing on the planet is taking money taking talent over money because th- then you make your product more attractive than if you just stick somebody in a car and they're out there tearing up his stuff every week and just but they brought a big picture with them well, moving on to the truck race, Lawless Allen says Haley Deacon is talentless and just sailed it off in there and wrecked me. Not the first time she's wrecked me. She does it to f-ing everybody. Casey, you can't say that. It's a part of the script. Oh, spot on spot I got to bleep you out now. Freddie, <laughs> just making your job harder. Uh, <laughs> spot off. I mean... Didn't they get? When, didn't you guys get into it, this guy last year when you were spotting? Yeah, that no, it was a couple years ago. A couple years ago. Yeah. Um, listen, I, I, there's nobody out there that's talentless. I don't think you know. They're like, there's maybe there's some that are more talented than others, uh, but I think if you look up, the, there's a saying about I think it was like glass houses and stones or something <laughs> like that. Um, <laughs> You know, if you look up the the YouTube clips for either one, there's not a lot of highlights to see. Um, so maybe just stay in your lane. I get it. It's frustrating. Uh, and it was her fault. She drove into turn three, got loose, and, and chased it up into him. It wasn't like she ran in there and drove through the back of him. She just You can count the times that she's done that on one hand in the truck series. Yeah. I, it, you would take all your hands and your feet to count the times that she's been wrecked. <laughs> so, and... I'm spot off as well because let's just be honest. I mean, this kid's not lighting the world on fire himself, and he's made a lot of mistakes. And we could we could sit here and make three shows worth of all the things that he's done too. Like Martinsville, what I'm spotting for, he would every corner roll down there just to hit her in the middle of the corner. Just that's why she, that's what they. I mean, he was rolling down there, and you could you know how you see him get off the brake and roll more speed into the middle to try to move somebody. Every corner he was doing that. So not um. I would look up his stats, but I'm going to be willing to bet she's got more NASCAR wins and if you in the K and N and stuff like that. And I don't know if I don't know what Lawless past is. Do you? No. Yeah, I have no idea. But um, I mean, he I ran K and N West. I know he came through that same kind of system. He ran McAnally's cars a little bit, but this is just. I mean, it happens, man. I mean, whenever you go back a couple years ago and. Bubba messes up and wrecks Brad. What's he do? You did. I mean, he did. He was just racing. You know, yeah. it happens. It's not. Does that make Bubba talentless? No, he just messed up. So, and she doesn't. She doesn't make a lot of mistakes. They people put her in a bad position a lot on purpose. And I think the best indication of you know what Haley can do is when she ran that Xfinity car when it said when it singled out and got single file, she was able to be pretty competitive. I thought. Yeah. I mean, more so than the trucks, but it was more. It was more driver and machine versus, you know, just who can hold it wide open and do stuff like that. So that's what we talked about. You know, we talked about earlier this year with Kraus. Same thing. You know, Kraus. Yeah, he's I mean, ran he well. Was, he was he was a, a good truck series driver, but I think he's better in the Xfinity car because of yeah. It just you have to drive those cars. And exactly. It, it's more so about the, you're, you than just and maybe Lawless will do. Maybe he, if he gets the opportunity, he can get into a car and and. See if he can outperform the equipment more. You know what I mean? Like, because when you get the Xfinity car, it's like Zane ran good. Yeah, I thought Zane did fine. It's it's easier to just race, figure out what you got. There's more options with the Xfinity cars. Trucks, it's just it's like you better get it all on a restart and hope you come out off a of turn two with, with it still pointing straight. Yeah. So, but I don't really think these, you know, these uh, comments are are needed or. Um, very well thought out. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, it's just frustration and I get it. Like, but, I'm but not saying be the, happy about but it. At the same time, mm-hmm. like, it's just, you, you got to know what you're doing. Like, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, if we sat here and asked him, did you ever, have you ever messed up and got into somebody just racing too hard? If he says no, we're all, we're getting struck <laughs> by lightning. So, talking about, you know, he, I think that's a niche truck, right? That he runs. 
Uh, I know. Uh, I mean, I, I know so. it's the forty-five. Mm-hmm. I assume it's an East truck. It might not be. I could be wrong. But it is. Uh, it is. It is. Um, well, uh, Bailey Curry did a really good job the other night. Bailey yeah. Curry is somebody that like quietly runs well when he gets in stuff. Uh, I remember him running a Johnny Davis car, and it was because Herm was spotting for him that I kind of, you know, I knew talking to him a little bit. Um, but he, I feel like he kind of performs really well in one of the, you know, and, and he and he has the ability to make some mistakes too, which everybody in that series does. Uh, but you know, if we're talking about Barry going to the four and maybe Carson going to the eight, that's going to open a good truck up over there. And and there's good guys in that town. We go back to the talent over money that don't have a lot of money that could possibly get in there. Bailey Curry's one of them. A kid like Caden Honeycutt's another one that does a really good job. Uh, when he jumps in trucks, one-off deals, uh, that could be somebody to look for that. But I thought Bailey the other night, did I saw he qualify. I think he was on the front row. And then he, he ran top five, six, seven, something like that all night long. So shout-out to him on the on the better side of things for Nice, maybe. They had a good night, I guess, with a win and yeah, and uh, Bailey. Well, continuing on the topic of frustrations, this time coming from the Xfinity Series, Cole Custer expressed his frustration post-race after NASCAR did not make A.J. Allmendinger fix the damage that he claimed gave the team an unfair advantage in the closing laps of the race. Spot on, spot off, TJ. I didn't see the damage. Is there any picture? I, did never, I couldn't find one. Like, is, is there any pictures of the damage? Well, I mean, I guess you just got a wreck. and. <laughs> Listen, th- it's not the first time. No, it's not the first time a car has uh, been in a wreck. And if you're good enough to wreck and hurt your car to make it better, you probably deserve to be faster. <laughs> yeah. Like because that the only time I can remember this being an advantage was and they I think they had a, a roll against it the next week was whenever uh, Truex got a little damage at Martinsville on the right front fender. Just cut it off. I, I think it was made <laughs> out of cardboard and then you just take it off and then that tire just cools itself and doesn't heat up and the thing turns for longer yeah and martin was really fast that day as a matter of fact i'm pretty sure he won the he race. Won the race yes so but i mean i i don't know what the damage was if it was blatant like we had a little bit of damage too we got run into the back of and it pushed our our the back of our bumper up about a half inch or something like that the whole spoiler was pushed up in the air what are we gonna do yeah Shut well it. i guess Stop. Cole cole did have to fix damage on his car i think in a previous race because it was he was getting yeah damage. i mean i don't i don't i'd have to see the damage i didn't see it so what ha- i mean we see this all the time and i think nascar does a pretty good job about it you know i'm sure something slipped through the cracks but you know we used to see it back in the day you know they'd come in for a pit stop and the jack man or the tire carrier would literally body slam himself into the side of the car oh, trying yeah. to cave the door in yep. and they they would catch it and make the guy come back down pit road and fix it so i think if they look and see you know if, if i i have not seen the damage either i have not seen a picture of it i heard all the stuff on the radio about it um you know if they if they you know get run in the back of and then they go over there and they're manipulating the right rear quarter panel a certain way and nascar can go back and look at that i think they'd make them come back and do it but if it's just literally damaged from the fend you know if the if the right rear gets damaged and they just pull out the fender well or the quarter panel well to to you know get it off the tire or you know listen every time we pit if there's any opportunity to take any kind of leeway with you know getting an advantage to your car everybody's going to do it uh mm-hmm. sometimes you get caught sometimes you don't um but you know if i feel like nascar probably went back after all the chatter on the radio if nascar went back and looked at it you know they, and they felt like they didn't. I say, I feel like I say this word every week now. Egregiously pull on the fender or get it out there. Yeah. Then, mm. then it is what it is. And looking at this, the damn thing's taped on. Oh, we got a picture. Yeah, we got a picture in the group me. It. <laughs> it's a good picture of Bailey. Um, but it like, yeah, that that doesn't look to me like I could have seen if they were like flaring the right rear out some or or just what it. It just looks like it got wrecked, and and that's what it is. You know, we saw where was it? I think it was was it Richmond, maybe. Kyle Busch, they brought his ass in like a hundred laps later to take a piece of tape off the car because it ended up on the nose. You know, I don't just, know what you do there. Like, hey, uh, come back in and knock that. I mean, that thing's destroyed. Yeah, <laughs> I don't so. know. And it, listen, it was it was obviously an advantage. He. Like we were racing, we I was spotting for Chandler, and we led a good part of it. And then the, the, I thought the double zero was a little bit better than us. He ran us down, and we're kind of racing each other for the lead. 
And then I look up, and AJ's like four tenths faster than everybody. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And he just drove by, drove by the two of us like we were parked. I was like, yeah. well, damn. And then uh, Chandler made a comment on the radio about the right rear of the, the ten on one of the restarts. Yeah. I said, oh, maybe that's yeah. why. So, I mean, but I mean, hey, that, if you're good enough to do that, go ahead. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that was planned, but it certainly no. didn't. It didn't hurt his feelings at all. All right, listen up, everyone. I know y'all are probably putting together vacation plans, planning your next tailgate at the track, or just looking to upgrade some things around the house. Our new sponsor, Money Lion, the all-in-one mobile finance app, has been part of the racing community for years and is dedicated to helping people like you take control of your money and make good things happen. With Money Lion, you can borrow, save, invest, and earn money all in one place. Casey, here's the best part. They want to chip in with a little something to get you started. That's right. Easy money, people. Download the Money Lion app today, and when you open an account, use the promo code dollar sign dirty mo, then just set up direct deposit to earn $55. How awesome is that? That's promo code dollar sign dirty mo and get up to $55. Already have the Money Lion app? Great. Make sure to follow them on social media because they're hooking race fans up with opportunities to win some really cool stuff, including cash giveaways, exclusive on-track experiences, and custom rewards like next-level grills for your tailgates. With the Moneyline app, you're one step closer to getting your financial future on the right path. Visit moneylion.com slash hotpass for more info. I got I to gotta go. Ten okay. Four. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. Let me check in with Brad. He's probably still in Nashville. Yeah. While while we wait on him to get here, do we want to start DBC A main, and then we can pick up with spot on spot off when he gets back? All right. Let's move on to the DBC A main, where we chat all things dirt racing. Um, I don't know, Freddie. I think I was glued to Dirt Vision watching the Hughes Hits race every single night last week. Yeah, it, I, I didn't realize that that was such an event. I mean, I guess it's a, what is it, the High Banks Hustle, I think it's called. Uh, I had some buddies that. I think it's one of, if not the highest paying outlaw race. I saw it was like 250000 to win, which is a, a solid. I mean, the, the I've seen for years about people talking about the late models getting all the big paying events and it seems now i was i was looking i actually tweeted something from couch race the other day um there was the this race in houston was 250 grand to win they have a million dollar to win event coming up at eldora and then uh <laughs> brett's in nashville stop All right, well, uh, the <laughs> DBC Audible has officially been called. Uh, Brett is apparently not going to make it to the show today. His flight did not change, apparently, like we had thought it might have. And we changed the show for him, and we, so we did Brett, the you show suck. To, to move back to his schedule a little bit. And uh, so TJ had to bail. He's going, I don't know, he's going to lunch with Brad or something. I don't know where he went. Uh, but thankfully... We have an entire race team down the street we could pull talent from, so we called old Taylor Moyer up, and uh, Taylor, luckily, we have a little bit of your time today. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> luckily, all my meetings went long, so uh, I was just sitting on the tire eating a packet of tuna fish and got a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing going on there. Nope. So, yeah. Uh, how was your weekend this weekend? Uh, it was up and down. We felt really good off the truck for practice, um, and then we got in there. We, none of us qualified well. All the JRM cars were really good in practice, <laughs> really good pace, uh, long run. We ran like 40 laps in practice. It was nice to just have practice. Yeah. Um, and then none of us qualified well. We got together as a group, really talked about why we thought that happened and how we were going to react. And then as a group, we went, you know, right into that race, which was just a uh, <laughs> show. It was a <laughs> show, yeah. <you> um, <laughs> so, like, from, from a crew chief's mentality, I mean, I think I had three or four tire cycles on my first set of tires by the time I took those off. Same thing with stage two. You're just always wondering where your car is really yeah. at. Um, we were okay. 
we were going to run top five. We did run top five. That whole race was just kind of, you only have three sets of tires. So many guys had spun and take two or three or one or whatever. That last caution comes out. We're fifth. Uh, we didn't really have a winning car. Didn't want to make our day worse. So I wasn't going to put on 50 lap scuffs. And then darn if like everybody behind me pits to put on <laughs> mixed match scuffs. And the only person who out, you know, outran us on that was I think Marty Lindley and Sam. They had made a good call. They had taken two in fuel during the green flag stops. They were eighth or ninth, and the worst that was going to happen is they were going to fall back to eighth or ninth. But that left them with that set of tires um, for the end. So that was a good call on Marty's part. But other than that, it was just a disaster. The grip level is so bad. You know, we, we practiced at 530, and then, you know, first corner lap one, you saw how it went. Yeah, it was – and, you know, it was – we were talking about it on here earlier in the show. Just, you know, you, you kind of eventually see – this is the Xfinity series, you know, like the, the, the these guys are, are very talented, all a lot of them. But there's a lot of guys out there that, you know, you it's very we're talking about the track and how easy it is to just overdrive the entry to the corner. Oh, yeah. And then especially if you got somebody on your door, you know, you've seen every instance, almost every wreck was two guys racing each other hard into turn one and or on, on each other's doors and chasing up into each other. So, yeah, it, it definitely like we were talking about earlier, just it took like it felt forever to get that race going and, and just even like towards the end got a little bit better. But, yeah, it was interesting to see that that last strategy play out because we were up there running second or third and we were awful at that point. We felt awful. I mean, we were on thirds. So we're not terrible, but, yep. uh, you know, like we, we were, I kind of felt like we were in trouble when that yellow came out and just, but what do you do? Like, you know, if you, know. you're going to go to the back and you're probably not going to drive back up through there. We had, I think they said our best set of tires had like 24 laps on them or something like that. Yeah. And they've been like cy- probably the yeah. same as oh, us. Yeah. Cycled three times and you're like, the, the, the glue's not even dry on the lug nuts. Like it's just going to be, <laughs> yeah. there's still 14 on the lead lap. I don't know. It's, it's a, that's the, the thing about our series, um, especially coming down from cup that's been hard is just the limited tire sets. Yeah. You know. And I was surprised. I didn't realize how limited it was the other day because we were on that longer green run at the end and I knew we weren't going to run back down to the, the 10 or the four or the double zero. And I was like, man, I said, Bruce, we got another set laying. And he's like, oh no, we're done. He's like, that's yeah. all we got. I was like, oh shit. Like I, I always usually feel like we always usually have that one extra. Like if there's a late caution, he's like, no, that's it. We're out. I was like, oh boy. So well, most races, you're right. Most races I'd say Bruce, I know Bruce well enough to know he calls them like I do, and you one for set stage one, one for stage two, one for the fuel break, and that leaves you a set land. But some of these races, that's how NASCAR does it. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. But anyway, let's kind of jump back into it. We just obviously here you're jumping in mid show. We talked about some stuff here. One thing, a couple things pertaining to you. One is we talked about uh, Tony Stewart making this you know big proclamation that he prefers to go get a talented guy over somebody that's gonna you know bring a, a, a rich dad or something like that. Obviously, this pertains to you. He took your driver this year, Josh, who I think we all know is really talented. But just talk about the 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 the, the deal working with him and, and seeing it up close and personal now. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't be actually more happy about the situation. People have been like, "Aren't you sad? You're losing Josh." Well, of course, Josh is talented. But if you went in my office, you know, uh, Miss Kelly, she put dry erase paint on all our walls. And the first thing on our goals list for this year, my goal list. I was actually not winning a championship. It was it was get Josh to cup. Um, and I think what's important to that is, obviously, it's a personal thing for me and Josh, but it's also about what Josh represents. Um, I'm a blue-collar kid that grew up on a farm and dirt racing in the Northeast. Uh, my friends still dirt race up there. We all know how this sport goes. I think Joey Logano just spoke about how broken the, the model is right now. Um, so when you can get somebody there purely on their talent, and somebody gives them a chance in a good ride, not, yeah, you know, that's a win for the, the little guy. That's a win. That's the American dream, right? Hard work pays off. Josh did it, this, you know, the way people talk about him. I'm sure he pushed a broom at some point at Junior Motorsports, right? Drove pit cars, been a mechanic, late model program. None of that's glorious or glamorous. Um, I'm sure everybody just assumes, I think, that, you know, Dale Jr. just carried him through. But the guy did it on hard work. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I think we all need reminders, <clears throat> especially nowadays in society, that hard work still pays off. And I, I've i obviously known Josh and I have pretty open, and he told me as soon as the talks really started to get serious, and then I knew when it's when he signed and everything, and and it's, it's hard to not go, ru- go run around and tell the world because you're so proud, happy, you're happy, yeah. right? But no, this is, what, I mean, this is what we wanted from the beginning. I remember when Dale brought Josh to me in 21, we knew Sam was signed up for a half year and I don't like I've dr- I've done these multi-driver deals a bunch 
And I don't really knew, know for a while if we knew who was going to drive the beginning. And I know our team guys started talking about it. And then we, we found tire pros and some sponsorship. And that was COVID racing. There's no practice. So our MO was kind of like the first stage, Josh got used to the car. Second stage, we might get a stage point or two. And then the third stage, we were kind of just there competing a lot. Um, if we weren't doing crazy things like jumping through the grass in Atlanta. <laughs> uh, but then we go out and we win Martinsville. Then we go run second at Darlington. We could have won that race. It was us in the seven. Then we go run second at uh, um, Dover. And I think he just proved he deserved to be there. And in fact, we went to Nashville that year. And him and I talked before. And he's like, look, this is my last race for this year. Just call this race like you're going for broke. So I remember as soon as the window opened, I short pitted the field from like third. I, I, we were fast. I didn't know if we could get to the leaders. I'm like, yeah, you know, big cojones, short pit the field. Mm -hmm. Letarts up in the booth like, yeah, that's what you should do. Caution comes out, gets stuck a lot down. <laughs> we took the wave. <laughs> had to take the wave around. I felt so bad. Took the wave around. We came back to finish fourth, yeah. but, you know. But hey, yeah, that's what you got to do. But then it worked out. He got some more. He got a lot more opportunity that year with Michael's injuries, and then, you know, the rest is history. But the, the announcement this year and what, what Tony's doing where he wants racers uh, doesn't matter about dad's money. You know, he said the same thing about Priest. Um, I think it's great. I think it's, I think it's what we need. I, ho I like the model. I like that old model where the team already has the sponsors and they go find the guy to drive the, the car driver, and represent yeah. the brand, not the opposite of the driver brings the brand with them. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and, and you talk about that being your number one goal. That's just, that's gotta be a source of pride for junior motorsports and all. I mean, I think I seen the other day, Kelly tweeted that it, it this is like the 10th full-time drive. 10th driver to go run a full-time cup series you know ride from jrm so that i mean that's phenomenal i don't i can't think of anybody else that's producing cup levels you know cup series talent at that kind of level but yeah it's awesome to see for them guys um the other thing that we just talked about right before you got here was um obviously cole custer quite upset about the back of the 10 car and I, and well i had just seen the picture today i hadn't seen it until this morning um, or this afternoon here, but you know, where, where do you sit at that? Because obviously we know, I told, I, I said earlier, every time we pit, if there's a way that any of you guys can make your car any better, where I said, they, back in the day, they used to run the damn jack man into the side of the thing, yes. try and cave the door in, you know? And, and, and I thought NASCAR does a pretty good job of if they see something that's out of bounds or completely over the line, they make you come back and fix it. I didn't see, I didn't know what was here. I don't know. Like, obviously it was, it was worked on pretty heavily, but like, what, what would you like to see? Or did you think that was an unfair advantage? Uh, so I've seen him call it a couple different ways. Um, you're right. There was the days in NASCAR where, when the Jackman would pull the right rear tire, he'd, he'd hip check the door and they'd pop in. And it was great. Um, I remember the rule came out. I think it was, I think it was Larson. Uh, and I would say Chad on the 42. That's when the, they taped a fender strut to the outside, fixing damage to create a lip. I think that one got called out. Uh, I had to start, <clears throat> I think the statute of limitations apply now. <laughs> I think last year maybe, yeah, last year with Sam, we kissed the wall in practice at Phoenix, and when me and Danny Jr. repaired the car, it had a pretty good lip trip, and they let us qualify, and then they caught it, and then to let us save face, they let us go to the rear for a mechanical adjustment, didn't throw me all the way out, but, I mean, it's a game you play, right? Um, I, the competitor in me, well, part of me wants to, you know, give him a golf clap and say, good work. Like, I, yeah. you know, you don't want to be the whistleblower. I, I enjoy the good, smart crew chiefs and mechanics that have some gamesmanship and some craftsmanship. I mean, it certainly picked him up on the speed chart. Jesus. Like, I, you're looking at those speeds <laughs> and you're like, the whole field have been pretty close all day with not much fall off. And all of a sudden there's an actual offset. Um I don't know. I just let it. I'll leave it in the drivers and the owners' hands. I, I'm not the guy who wants to run around the garage and blow the whistle on my fellow uh, crew chiefs because you know what? They're gonna catch me doing stuff someday, and I want to be treated the same way. Yeah, I, I said that. I said I felt like for a good portion of the race, it was us and the the double zero up there racing each other for the win. And and next thing I know, I'm like, holy shit, AJ's three tenths faster than both yeah. of us. I'm like, where are you coming from? There was a, there was a <laughs> severe offset. <laughs> <laughs> that nobody had had all, all weekend. So, but, all right. I appreciate you jumping in here, man. We'll continue on now. Casey, let's get back to spot on, spot off. Well, Ryan Blaney crashed into a concrete wall at Nashville and calls for NASCAR to add a safer barrier in the location, saying he'll, quote, pay for the fucking thing. And in response, NASCAR did release a statement 
saying uh, engineers work closely with safety experts on the implementation of barriers around the track as we do following every race weekend, we will evaluate all available data and make any necessary improvements. Taylor, spot on, spot off. Wait, just to clarify, spot on is I agree with Spot Blaney. on is, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a tricky one, but just, yeah. I you, stand with Blaney. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, we just got the pictures for some place we're going where they've added Safer Barry because they took it out of Fontana. So they, some place we're going, they just added inside because they had free and stuff. These, my thing is, <clears throat> these guys put their lives at, their, at risk. Um, there's no reason to not have it. Money, money can't be the factor because we're always doing everything as an organization, as a you know, to save money and be safer. So, all right, just spend the money and be safe and be done with it. There's only so many walls. Just go, do it and be done. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we say this all the time, and it's like, oh, he hit in a weird spot. Well, we just keep finding weird spots to hit. Right. Like, you know, it's yeah, it took a strange looking wreck where the six and the the twenty four looked like he just laid back and blasted the six, knocked him out of shape. And then that kind of just chain reaction goes all the way back to the field, like you see on a, on any other restart when somebody gets jacked up and and Blaney just gets turned halfway down the straightaway and ends up you know sliding through the grass and hitting at a weird angle. And I, I noticed the card was destroyed. And like as I thought, that was one. And, it, and these aren't the new clips yet, or the new you know uh, where they've slotted them to, to try to make them give. I don't think they're supposed to not be implemented until Atlanta. So that thing, I mean, that was the the, the hardest I've seen a car crumple up in the front um so i mean it, it went to show you there it's a good hit and then i seen where he was pretty much asking for help right away over the radio and, and these guys i mean these things are still pretty rigid they these guys when these guys wreck they feel it and and they're still complaining about it hopefully these these new updates will, will help with that a little bit but yeah we there's just no reason in 2023 why we're still adding safer barriers in places that you know we don't have them like just, just put them everywhere, wherever it ta wherever it is. If there's a wall, put a safer barrier on it because we've made it pretty obvious that they work, and and we've made it also pretty obvious that if you leave somewhere unprotected, we will find it. So it this, always we, happens. Like, I don't understand why it is. <laughs> we have to. We just have to step up as an industry and 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 make this stuff safer. NBC returns to TV this weekend at Nashville, featuring extended post race coverage and limited pre race coverage. Freddie, spot on, spot off. So uh, obviously, I didn't watch on TV. Um, what? So no. I think if I had to pick, I would rather post race than pre race. You know, I think that that's always been the the complaint I see the most is. Oh, my driver finished third today, but I didn't get to see an interview with him after the race was over. Or this guy had a great run and nobody talked to him. Like pre-race, I feel like you can do your pre-race show during practice. Like, you know, you talk about what's going to happen, what people should look for. You know, has the you know, what's going on or what's the tendencies of the racetrack? How how the race has played out in the past. Like, you can cover that stuff at a different time. But post-race is now, you know, you, I've seen a lot of complaints about Fox where it was like basically just a victory lane interview and then they were cutting back to whatever sport was coming on next and then they were counting on like race hub or or some other show after the fact to to, to get those reactions but i think if i had to pick one i've seen people complaining about it and it was just the natural state of the world is just people want to complain about everything now um but you know if if would you what would you rather like i get it you would rather an hour long pre-race and an hour long post-race but if you got to pick one or the other just give me the post-race every time yeah, spot on. I actually didn't realize that was the situation, but I did make the comment to uh, Leah, my wife. We watched the race last night, and they showed all of Ross's stuff on the front stretch, and, like, they really took a, a long time to talk to him, and then all the victory lane. You know, we got to see a lot of people, and then we cut back to Truex, who was second, and they did third and fourth, and that had to be, like, 15 minutes. And I was like, wow, that took a really long time, but it was kind of nice, and she said, yeah, they must have got they must have got done sooner. And I, I was like, okay, I didn't I didn't even know until you said that. But I agree. It's a lot of the times the pre race, it just seems like uh, they just got Michael running up and down pit road, filling space, right? It's just you kind of get that feeling when you're on a team out there too. You're just standing around. It's that awkward time. The drivers are back from intros. Yeah, you're doing sponsor photos and stuff, but you can tell they're dragging it out for TV. You're not really. I mean, guests sell a couple more beers and hot dogs in the grandstands. But other than that, yeah. I don't I really do, know why. I do think they moved because they changed the start time of the race a little bit. I think they were supposed to start a little bit. Like, they were supposed to have a, some coverage from what I understood. But because the start time 
shifted yeah. for weather. So I think next week it will be different. Gotcha. Um, but I, I did appreciate all of the post-race coverage because that's, I mean, that's what we want to hear. Yeah. Blake actually has the NBC schedule. They did have like 30 minutes of pre-race coverage on yeah. NBC, but obviously with the green flag being pushed up. Uh, they just went straight to green, but yeah, still thirty minutes versus maybe I'd still more rather of an like extended even yeah even Fox just ad. give me no, I'm good good with no pre race you know yeah. go in there introduce yourselves take five minutes and and talk about something quick but you don't need if you're gonna give me thirty minutes somewhere give it to me at the end of the race don't give it to me before the race racing season is underway make sure you download the DraftKings sportsbook app and use the code clear bet five dollars and get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets instantly. That's code clear, only on DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. In New York, call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700 on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort Kansas. In West Virginia, gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. Please play responsibly. In partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash auto racing terms. Let's move on to Reaction Theater. We all know that these tracks are getting a big part of the TV money deal. But I can sure tell you what they're not spending it on is covering every concrete wall around the track. That I thought we all learned a lesson when Jeff Gordon hit that wall in Las Vegas. So now we got Blaney hitting a concrete wall. And, oh, well, we didn't think a car was ever going to hit down there. Is that it? I, I, sound, I felt the like he was, like was going to keep going, but yeah, it's probably not good for air. Yeah, he went on for quite <laughs> some more time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we just talked about it. It's, you know, it, listen, it, they, and they say they work. They said they work with people to, to evaluate where they put these things. Just cover them all. Like, we, we no matter what, you, we, we keep finding places where you don't have them. So... <laughs> I think that guy was the road commissioner in my hometown of Vermont. Based on that <laughs> I miss those accents. This yeah, ne- same thing. I just cover him up. Cover him up, be done. This next call is from Morgan Wallen. Oh, oh really? Nice. Appreciate him calling in. Yeah. Last night I watched the National Race at Nashville Super Speedway on NBC. I wasn't too enthused on the race itself. There wasn't too many cautions to produce. <laughs> you think sounds he, just like him. You think sounds he, just like him. Right? He had any beer yesterday? <laughs> he sounds like sound Freddie like, on, like uh, on Broadway on Saturday. Yep. Was it? Is yeah. that the go-to karaoke song? No. 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 I just speaking English was difficult. <laughs> That's impressive. That takes talent, and uh, I can't say more power Morgan. to that guy. Yeah. I really thought Ross Chastain finally got a clean win, but somehow he causes a wreck right at the end of the race. When Daniel Suarez tries to go over and congratulate Ross and Chase bumps into him, I don't really know what happened. All I know is that it was caused by Ross winning. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. Damn it, Ross. Almost got through one clean. Well, I this was this was at the buzzer too. Pretty hysterical. <laughs> like I this Bubba just started laughing. I was packing my shit up. I didn't even. I wasn't even looking. We were on. We were like right at the entrance of pit road. I'm packing my stuff up, and I hear Bubba go, "Ha ha!" And I just look up, and there's cars wrecked. And I, I went back and watched the video of it, and and I don't know, I don't know if Chase. I know Chase was about three or four laps down. Maybe he thought he was going to run those three laps while <laughs> Ross was doing a burnout. Uh, but yeah, I seen somebody tweet like that's the most cars Chase passed all day. I don't know if he was mad at somebody or just mad in general. But I don't know why you're passing half the field coming to pit road, and then Daniel's just not paying attention. I guess, which it's I don't know. You wouldn't expect somebody to be coming, I guess. But that was just one of them deals where did, pretty, pretty funny to look at. Pretty did, silly looking. Did Daniel have to bring up a, bring out a backup after qualifying? <laughs> was that his second car? No, uh, was it? Oh, it he was. Uh, he did. He, that was I know, his backup car. I, was it a backup car? That's yeah. what I thought about. I know we were 
<clears throat> getting our car ready to race when they were qualifying, and I saw him, sp- you know, back in the wall pretty hard, and then that happened after the race, and I was like, well, you don't do two race cars in a weekend much oh, anymore. Oh, man, yeah, I didn't even think that about that. that was his backup car. It knocked the tow links out of it. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, he hit him a ton. Like, yeah. he, I mean, not a ton, but he hit him hard. I mean, yeah. and just unexpected. Like, I just that was pretty silly looking, and I'm sure. Well, it was, it was going to get an award. I think somebody else might get that award now. But It caught the commentators off guard completely. They, oh. The camera was panned away, so it made it sound like it was like an active event, you know, like fight, the fight or malicious yeah. or something. And they pan, they panned to it, and it's just clearly two guys confused as can be. Just the, the one video I saw, the, the first one I saw was from NASCAR's Twitter, and it's really funny because it's the in cars. So uh, you're looking at it, and Chase is passing everybody, and then Daniel swerves up in front of him. And then, like, you catch – I forget if it was – Daniel's in car or, or chases, but like in the background, you just see Ross doing donuts <laughs> right behind them. And it's just comical to say the least. Where was Briscoe going? That's what that's what I don't understand. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he was mad. Like he, they have been awful for literally two months now. I don't know. I there's something. Uh, they made a crew chief change, but I mean, it's to be that bad for for this period of time. They, they've I don't know. Like it's it's stunning. Honestly, like I don't know how you can miss it that much to where you're literally back there racing the 78 and the 77 on a weekly basis right now. And I feel bad for him. I love Chase. I think Chase is a great guy. I think Chase is a very good race car driver. He's he's he was in contention to win races last year. He won a race at Phoenix like he didn't forget how to drive in, in a year. So there's just something missing right now. And it's and it's it's stunning to look at. So I'm I'm assuming he was frustrated and. Guys are just looking to get the hell out of there at that point and probably just, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some kind of rule change about no passing coming to pit road or something after the race is over. But, it, uh, yeah, it, it was just not a good look on, on all fronts, really. Thanks, Ross. <laughs> Way to go, Ross. <laughs> all right, well, don't forget to call our new Reaction Theater number, 704-802-9572, or you can go to anchor.fm slash clear, click the message icon, send us your songs, messages, tell us how great we are or how much Brett sucks. Moving on to Ask DVC, send in your questions onto their u- each week using hashtag AskDBC. We will keep picking the best ones. And this first one is from Richie. Do you... <laughs> Do you bother shit their parents <laughs> when their driver splits two lapped cars down the middle? What can you even say to that? I'm assuming that's the Ross move. And I'm assuming, Freddie, that is for you. Yeah, I would say. Um, to my knowledge, I don't ever remember shitting my pants on the roof. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, you kind of, like, usually a lot of times you'll have to tell them that this is the move you got to make. Like, you're warning them. Basically, when we're coming up on a lap car, it's usually you got a slow one out front. He's been top. He's been bottom. He's been wherever they've been running. And that's what we always talk about, you know, when when you are in the position where you're getting lapped. Like, if people ask us for advice, they're like, well, you know, what should I do? Wherever you've been running, stay there. We'll find a way around you. It's just. You know, if you've been on the bottom, stay on the bottom because we know you're going to be on the bottom. If you can be the top, like, stay there because we, all right, this guy's been top. We'll go bottom. And sometimes you just catch it to where you you're, you catch two guys at the same time, and you're like, all right, this one's been top. This one's been bottom. You're going to have to use the middle. And, it, and that, that's just what it is. You can't afford to slow down, especially with these with the cup cars. You know, you break momentum, and it's it's a lap or so before you get it back. Um, so nothing really, nothing, you know, does – <laughs> we're supposed to stay pretty calm and up there and hitting our pants is probably not a mm-hmm. good trade. I think if anybody's done that, they probably wouldn't be up there very long. We'd probably run them off pretty quickly. It's too hot to be doing that. Oh, God. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> That's terrible. We uh, raced when we raced, it was like 91, 92. And uh, I, I seriously thought about TJ. I was like, you got to be hot, man. I'm hot. I'm sweating through everything down here. You got to be hot up yeah, there. It's, that, that's a tough place, too, because uh, it's like a tar roof, basically. So <laughs> it's it feels it's hot up there. But, hey, whatever. It is what it is. Part of the job. This next one is from Jersey Jack. How safe is Bubba Wallace above the cut line? And what is the discussion within the team in regards to being safe with points and ta- taking gambles for race wins? Uh, well, you're never really safe with points because there's guys that can win. I think we are 15th right now. I don't even remember. I think we're maybe 35-ish above the cut line. Um, we're just focused on running the best we can. And, you know, yesterday we caught a lucky caution, got, you know, cycled back to the front, got some stage points, 
and 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 finished 15th that was that was probably a win for us yesterday because i don't know that our car was good enough to run 15th all day um so it, it is what it is there's no i mean if it gets down to it and we're knocked out of the cut line you know everything's kind of case by case basis right now you're just focused on obviously you want to win every week i don't think we need to, we're not going to take any unnecessary gambles right now trying to win because we are currently locked in or currently in the playoffs right now and we'd have to have two winners from behind us knock us out which chase is back there bowman's back there there's good guys back there that can easily win races um but until that happens we you know we're in right now so there's no reason for us to panic um taylor you know you're crew chief you call races for a living um you know, obviously that you see times when the only time it really comes up is when you see that caution before the end of a stage. You know, now we've got rid of that at the at the road courses that, that, that came up a lot more often there. Um, but, you know, that that's it. Like if you're if you're on this cut line, you have to make the decision like I can chase these stage points here or I could flip it and probably get a better finish. You know, that's the only time that's a 50 50 call, I think. Yeah, you know, you're right. That's in your series, especially. There's that, and then there's the, do I pit short, do I pit long, possibly get trapped a lap down. Um, <clears throat> and it's probably situational track to track, depending on how skilled you feel at tracks, right? Um, I haven't followed Bubba's uh, point situation exactly, but I would think somebody outside the line, especially as you come up to the playoffs, is going to be much more you know, risky. If they, yeah. if they have to win to get in, it's easy. Sometimes that makes it a lot easier. The decision's made for you. Yeah. Uh, that's how Josh and I won Martinsville those years ago. We were just we, we didn't have to worry about points. I just flipped every stage, keep the track position, go win. And just like you alluded to on the on the road courses, that's the decisions you'd come up against about every time. There'd be the couple road course, uh, the couple cars um, that they weren't really running for drivers' points, and you're like, well, you can count on them to flip all the stages. Yeah. So if you want to go get points, you can get the free points, but you're gonna put yourself probably starting tenth in the final stage. <sighs> yeah, you just have to evaluate it on case by case basis in most times and sometimes it changes throughout the race based off of your the speed of your car like if sometimes you're in there and you're like hey we got a car to win we're staying on winning strategy that puts us right in sometimes you're like we gotta swing for the fences to even get a good finish and then sometimes you're middle of the road and that's that's the that's the tough part was like when you're ah just a little bad luck for somebody else we could be right there but we're not really fast enough to drive up there and get it um yeah i think you hit the nail on the head i i don't think there's any point for him to panic yet i don't think you can plan for what hasn't happened yeah yeah i mean you can't like if if somebody else wins i think it turns the our aggression level up a little bit because now we are the the cut line um but yeah I, there's there's no reason to gamble start gambling just yet taylor you're you're you guys are I think 100 points ahead of the cut line so like where's your mentality in terms of the, you know now until when the playoffs start for you guys gotcha yeah sorry i'm glad you informed me on how above the cut line <laughs> yeah like do you feel i don't pretty ever safe? think of it that way we're fifth we're 115 back i'm always looking at the next guy in front of us yep. um or maybe I, i'll I always write down in my binder going into each weekend who's two in points in front of me and two behind me um especially more when you get towards all the playoffs rounds or whatever but <clears throat> right now i'm full eyes ahead we're not running nearly as uh well as i expect us to be running um, so I'm just going to keep on focusing on running well and winning a race, right? Um, I just need to maximize more stage points. I don't really look back, look forward. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know how different crew chiefs are, but like I'm kind of a, we are a very, we have a process, we trust the process, we try to stay with that process. That's kind of our MO. If you start doing things differently all of a sudden, it, sometimes it creates more damage than, it, than it's worth, so. Uh, this last one is from Jane. Freddie, where are the spotters located in Chicago? <laughs> Which one? Uh, I think that there's 12 corners, and to do the race properly, I would probably need 10 to 11 spotters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, it's, it, we have three. I think we're actually bringing five per car uh, for our team. Um, so uh, the main spotter will be above the pit road, and there's a, I don't know what they call it, a president's club suite or something up there. Uh, so we'll be up in there. There is a building, uh, the Symphony Hall, I think it's called, in turn 10 or 9, somewhere over there, uh, that there's a balcony that the spotters can use. Uh, the third spotter is on a city tour bus. And a two-story tour a bus. two-story <laughs> city tour bus over in a, like turn four-ish area i think that is um listen we don't know They're, we're gonna maybe try and stick some guys at places but then you can't really 
if there's nowhere to stand, there's no point in having a guy in that corner because you can't get high enough to see anything, so it's pointless. Uh, right now, we're, there's actually just I see group me lighting up with the NASCAR officials and stuff about uh, whether or not we can see the choose cone, which as of right now, I don't think we can. Um, so maybe we might just put a guy over there for that. Like, we don't really know what to expect. Um, I don't think you're going to – I think where I'm standing, I'm going to be on that front stretch. I expect to see – Turn one and turn six coming back at me. Uh, turn one kind of going away from me down the front stretch, and it's just I don't, I don't know. It's gonna be. Hey, the good news is NASCAR informed us that they're gonna put a spot up pot outside that bus, so you won't have to shit your pants. Oh, that's oh, nice. That's that's nice. <laughs> that is excellent news for yeah. whoever, Taylor. whatever poor soul I send over that corner. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, on that note, obviously this is a brand new track for everyone. What's your mentality? How are you planning for this weekend? Um, we have, we felt like we, <laughs> surprisingly enough on the road course side with Josh, we found a setup that really works for him. That's predictable. He likes it. It's what we ran Portland with. Um, our mentality is take a car that he's comfortable and familiar with, go get him as many laps as he can, uh, enjoy it and take it as it comes, be a little cautious. And that's where actually, if you look at Josh's road course finishes last year, that's how he approached everything. He had a lot of top fives because he's just keeping it on track and staying out of the dumb battles. <clears throat> you know, we're, we're raising the car a little bit, get it off the manhole covers. Um, just the way the course looks, we better be good at, you know, things like braking uh, and then straight line <laughs> acceleration. Uh, but you know, we don't know what we don't know, so don't worry about it. We'll go figure it out when we're up there. We're all smart people. Uh, just bring a car that we know how to adjust on, that the driver knows how to drive, and we'll just learn together and try to enjoy it. It might never happen again. I know, I mean, I could I could try to get stressed out about all the things I don't know, but nobody knows, so why waste the effort? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's going to be a show. I mean, it's gonna, they're going to they're gonna throw the green flag, and a race is going to happen. Yes. Uh, so there's no point in bitching about it. It's, it is what it is, and it's going to be – interesting especially the first time somebody wrecks because yeah. if they're towards the front there's not a lot of places to go to miss them so uh it, it'll be interesting to see what happens hopefully it's hopefully it's a good show i know there's a lot of entertainment planned around the weekend big concerts and stuff that that they're kind of tying into this so it's it's just kind of ha going hand in hand with each other and and hopefully it's a good show i don't know i think i i had heard rumors we weren't going back now i hear rumors that we are going back for another year so it is what it is and if it's if it's a disaster, then maybe we won't ever have to deal with it again. If if it's a good show, we'll go back next year and do it again. So, like like uh, Taylor said, we don't know until we get there and, and see what happens. Hey, if you need a spotter, I'll be there. So. All right, I may. Shit. <laughs> I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> hey, I, you ever been on a bus? <laughs> <I'd> hold, <laughs> I'd hold a sign that says "spotter five hundred cash." Somebody will put it. Some, in your oh, hundred percent. I actually had some friends who were thinking of going, and I think the best spot where you can see all of the race track is up in one of the buildings that backs up on Michigan Ave. Yeah, the best spot is going to be a rooftop bar somewhere right. with a yeah. TV that you could just <laughs> with <watch>. the TV. <laughs> that's going to be the best spot with the eight second delay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> what an idiot. Well, easy. yep. Mm -hmm. Let's roll with it, Freddie. Well, go ahead, Casey. Kick it off. Brett Griffin. You call, you are, what, you call him Brett an idiot? If you are listening <laughs> to the show right now, if you're watching it on Dirt Vision, you are an idiot. <laughs> because we changed our entire day around for you, and then you don't even bother to show up. We all made it back from Nashville, okay? But there you are. Anything <laughs> else? Uh, well, Casey, I appreciate you giving it to Brett. That's fine. <laughs> you, uh, I could also. I mean, it was going to be Fre <laughs> It was going to be you at first for not well, remembering anything on Saturday. Night. I remembered all everything on Saturday. You asked me if I remembered the picture. I said vaguely. You, that, that, that means <laughs> you that asked I Megan to take a picture five different times after she had already taken one. Well, that's so. good. Um, <laughs> it happens to the best of us, especially in Nashville. Uh, I don't know how it doesn't go to. I don't even know where to go with the blame. I guess maybe slightly more on Briscoe than Suarez, but some somebody from that deal is getting an award. I don't know. Suarez, bro, Chase, I, I don't know why you're passing the half the field coming to pit road, and then Daniel, just use your mirrors and look before you turn. This, I learned that in driver's ed. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know. But somebody in that, somebody in that deal was an idiot. Yeah, I'd have to agree. That's the only thing I really saw. I'd like to remain impartial. Yeah, you don't want to. You, know, you never know who might end up driving your car one day. You know, you can't bash him too bad on here. Uh, but yeah. Taylor, do you have an idiot? No, he said. I was just he, agreeing. He, he, he oh, agreed. He oh. doubled down with me. Well, actually, 
That's a great segue. Who would you like to see fill the eight next year? Oh. <laughs> if you had a wish list. Oh, can you – yeah, I'd be a little more specific. <laughs> like, I'd be okay with uh, – an all-star car of all cup drivers. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I do enjoy working with younger guys. I've had 16 different drivers now. That's what, so that, that'd be a good question. Like, is that like, if I told you like you're going to have all the all-star, you know, you're going to have all the Hendrick cup drivers drive your car next year, or you have Carson Hosevar, who's a, a talented yeah. young driver coming up that, you know, especially somebody like that, that we see kind of going through a change right now of kind of learning from mistakes. Like, where where would, would you have more pride in going out and winning ten races with the All Star car or going out and running well with Carson? Yeah, actually, I that's pretty easy. I've always been the more like little black sheep type guy. Like I'm always gonna root for the underdog and want to pull for them. I'd I'd have more pride winning with a nobody, right? Yeah, uh, winning with a somebody, a nobody who's not a somebody yet. Now, winning races is winning races, but. I, you know, I do enjoy working. The people side of things is what I really enjoy about the sport. And I, I you know, a young guy coming up, as long as they're willing to work with me, not against me, and uh, we can, you know, it's nice to get more than one year, too. Like, with no practice now, you, you have to put some developmental time with yeah. these guys. So if you could get on a deal where you had two years and you knew you had some time to try, I mean, there's some tracks, if you're only with a guy once, you're only going to go there once with him, right? Like, that's a tall ass. Yeah. He's never been there. Especially how different the trucks drive or whatever he's coming from drives to the Xfinity car now. So Be Besides Carson, of the up-and-coming drivers, who do you think may be ready to move up to the next series? Uh, I take Zane back. I had Zane in 19. He's pretty darn good in the truck, right? Yeah, he's um, pretty darn good in anything right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed working with Zane in 2019. I, I know he's in the Ford camp now. Um... <laughs> Forgive me, I don't know a bunch of the yeah, truck drivers. No, no but if they're, yeah, I think proved a point. Just there's a lot of guys that can really take that ride in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then Andrew asked me to ask you about something with Sam Moyer. Mayer. Sam Mayer. Oh, Sa Sam Mayer. Why am I? <laughs> Taylor Moyer. Taylor Moyer. I'm so <laughs> tired. Nashville really got me. Uh, Sam, uh, did he like pee on you or something? Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Great story. No, he didn't actually. What the f***? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Th this is literally the text messages I get from Andrew. So, me and Sam. Uh, Sam's a great kid. He drove for me last year, but this would have been 2021. He got in at Pocono like two days after his 18th birthday when he's eligible. We go to Michigan. He rips the transmission out in the first stage. And uh, we've had a pretty bad year up until that point when I was a little frustrated. Um, ripped it out, and he came in. And rather than just be done, I said, no, we're going to fix it. And you're going to just, we're going to use the rest of the day as a test. We're going to be 30 laps down, but we're going to go learn some, we're going to turn this season around. I said, stay in the car. Don't even get out. Um, my group of mechanics was great. Put it up on jack stands. Uh, transmission's out to do that. You got to drop the exhaust pipes and all the straps that go with it. So I think we'd already dropped the exhaust pipes. Uh, we'd change the transmission, drive shafts back in. We're putting the exhaust pipes back in. And I'm laying on my left side. I'd be under the driver at this point underneath the car. Danny uh, Jr. is my car chief, good buddy. He's looking at me from the other side, and I see his eyes get, like, as big as saucers. And I feel something dripping in my ear, and I look up, and it goes, like, right in my mouth, in my eyes. And based off of his eyes, I was like, this kid just pissed on me. <laughs> so I jumped out from underneath the car. I ripped the window net out, and I started pulling his belts off, and I was going to drag him out of the window and drag him behind the trucks and just absolutely <laughs> stomp him <laughs> I like i'm got a long fuse but like that's too far you've just disrespected your people uh, no, no matter whether it's me or whoever's changing the Whoever. transmission and he's like what what and i'm like you peed on me he's like oh no he had just taken a whole water bottle to dumped cool it off and poured it off. <laughs> by the time it got through him and through the seat and you know i but i i don't lose my temper a lot and then we laugh about it he's He's told the story, too. We laugh about it. It was kind of a good moment, right? You just got to get a little frustrated sometimes yeah. to come together. But I was pretty, like, my fuse was gone. And I was like, well, I'm going to get fired because I'm just beat up one of my drivers. <laughs> and, you know, Scott Mayer, his dad's not going to be impressed and been like, Taylor can't crew chief Sam anymore. <laughs> but me and Sam have a lot of laughs about that. That moment. is uh, phenomenal, actually. Oh. That is actually very It wasn't pee. It was just water. That's, yeah, let's clarify. At least that's what he told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to DBC picks. Uh, Brett is 
supposed to go first. I did win, so. Congratulations. Good. Thank you. Brett, Thank you. so I think the only fair thing is when I when I didn't show up a couple weeks ago, you guys picked um, Balicki for me, and I, apparently he wasn't even in the race. So I think we just let Taylor pick somebody for Brett, and he could pick whoever he wants. Done. Yeah, I'll pick um, Yosef Gostenberg. <laughs> Isn't that that guy? <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Gin- <laughs> What's the guy's what? name? Van Gisbergen. Van Gisbergen. Yeah. No, he's, in the, he's in the 91, right? You, but yeah, but he could do well. You're supposed to pick somebody. Trust who me. Isn't he racing. could pick him. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I just Fine. like his name. <laughs> uh, TJ picked. I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> Mc- TJ picked AJ. AJ. Freddie. I go. I will take. Uh. I don't know how much road racing is really going to imply here. Uh, I'll take Sindrick. I will take McDowell. Okay. Good picks. Thanks. I would like to take McDowell, but I don't know that this is going to be like a overly, <laughs> like a road course ringer is going to do really well. So you guys know all about the drivers and the spotters, right? I think in terms of like McDowell mm-hmm. might be one because Travis Peterson, who crew chiefs that car, is known for thinking way outside the box pit strategy. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Travis I is like a friend it. of mine. He I'd say it right to guy. his face and he'd giggle and say, yes, I am. But like Travis gets those good finishes off, off, off having the balls to throw some crazy strategy out. So it could, sure. it could be somebody like that. Same with actually Brett's picks, not terrible. Darian's pretty sharp. <clears throat> I think he's probably doing that 91 car like he usually does. And who knows? Yeah. Perfect. Well, man, I appreciate you shooting down the street here and, and jumping in and bailing me out. So I don't have to talk to myself and yeah, fight with myself for an hour. Uh, thanks to TJ for hanging out for 10 minutes and Brett not showing up at all. So uh, <laughs> hey, thanks, Casey. Me? I appreciate you guys coming. I appreciate all 13 people behind the table over there <laughs> that we have now. Uh, I don't, we've got an entire social media team. I feel I like think. we're getting judged. There's know. like a whole panel. Casey's on American Idol over here. The way, <laughs> they, <laughs> the way they've got her positioned. Uh, but yeah. So uh, listen, we're going to Chicago. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. Good luck to all of us, I think, yes. to get through there clean. Uh, and hopefully it's a good show for everybody uh, when we get out there. Go come out, see the race, go to the concerts, enjoy. Don't forget to catch the show on Dirt Vision starting this Wednesday. Leave us a comment, like, share, tell us what you think. Have a great week. We out. Bye.